Hi everybody. In the previous video, I made uh, instructions for sending sensor data into CSV coming in from the gamepad here and going ultimately to Node-RED. And the way we did that was putting it into a text file. Uh, the, the file extension was txt, but truly it was a comma separated values file because it would just had values and commas and a space. We'll get to that. Um, so this video, I want to show you how to format the same file to give two values to Node-RED and how to make the gauges for each of the axes that you want to plot and how to collect one value from the pair of axes, how to correct the gamepad settings. Actually, you don't need to correct it. I'm just showing you that the correct setting is this one. It has the, the blue um, LEDs on the left half are lit and that's indicating what setting it's in. Then finally, how to verify axes inversion. That means we're gonna just check uh, our values at the end of um, showing them in our gauges. The file you're looking at here is l3chart.py and it was previously used, but I've modified it a little bit. Just consider that you don't have this file and it's unique. So the only notable thing about this file that I want to talk about right now is that we, we put a comma in between our two values that are stored as strings and we've removed the space. The space caused me trouble later on when I'm grabbing it in Node-RED. Um, and then when you finally print uh, the values, they look like this. So if I run the L3 program, um, I'm using sudo python3 L3 chart, enter. And now it's starting to grab these values and I'll, and I'll show what it looks like. Um, this is left direction. This is the right direction. This is down and this is up. I thought I saw no positive. Here's a positive. Here's a negative. Okay. It'll be easier to see it on the gauges. Over here in Node-RED, I have first removed the timestamp, and I just want to show you that I'm doing this. And I've replaced it with this cool function called watch. And what it does is it watches this file and it only injects a trigger whenever there's a change in this file. So that's neat. That means Node-RED is basically going to match the frequency of my Python program over here automatically. Now, um, it goes to the, the ufile.txt and it reads it. Okay, this hasn't changed from the last one. And then um, the values are parsed by treating it as a CSV file. So uh, if I remove this, then it's just telling you that we're naming the columns explicitly here in the node, but we're not passing the column names. Okay, that hasn't changed. And then the function that I've added is the new piece that, that we change or, and that needs to be reviewed right now in this video. Let's open up grab t dot, which is the function that, that takes the values uh, both stored in CSV and grabs just one of them so I can get my theta dot command. So uh, this has some residual comments, but um, the only lines that we're using is message.payload equals message.payload with um, this syntax here that reaches in and grabs the, the gamepad theta dot parameter from the object. Um, and there's another way to do that that's slightly simpler. I'll show you in the next one. So we return the message that that used to have two values and now it just has one value, the t dot. Okay, then the grab x dot is very similar. It's a cleaner looking though. And what we do is we take the message.payload and we reassign it to b message.payload.gpx dot. So this part of the payload is the parameter within the object um, that we're gonna we're gonna take that parameter and sign it back to the payload and move it one level up basically and we return that and both of these functions do the exact same thing but today I learned there's two ways to do it I'm gonna deploy this now and then I'm going to manually overwrite the txt file because I want to see if it grabs my change so um, cd tmp slash tmp 
and I want to do uh, cat, no, 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 nano u file. And I'm going to change this to minus 0 0.5, and then control X to exit, Y, enter. Okay. Uh, permission denied. Oh, I need to have sudo into this. In the temporary folder, you have to be the super user. So sudo this. Then I can change this to say minus 0.5 and um, type control X, Y, enter. And then um, what I expected to see was maybe this uh, would be running and capture a change. Oh, this is disabled. Well, I'll keep that in the video so we can learn the lesson. Deploy. Now let's change it again. Point 0.6, control X, Y, enter. And boom, we get all these debug informations. So debug one is shown here. It sees just the exactly the string that it read. Um, debug two has converted it into um, an array because that's what this is supposed to do. Debug three, um, I don't, I can't say much about this, but obviously it's changed again. And debug four looks a lot like debug three. So let's dive into the actual um, dashboard. Okay, now I'm gonna run L3 chart. And then I'm, we're gonna look at the values on the actual graph. So when we come over to the gamepad and uh, we look at the axes, we have the, the left and right where left turn is actually the positive theta dot request from the gamepad. This is according to the scuttle coordinate system. And then the right turn gives us the negative value. And the X is one for the X dot uh, forward motion. The forward gives us a positive and the down gives us a negative.